under a tropical storm warning as Tropical Storm Dorian approaches that island. It comes nearly two years since Puerto Rico was ravaged by hurricanes Irma and Maria. The process of rebuilding has been a slow one. The territory has been plagued by poor infrastructure, complaints of lack of support from the federal government, and most recently, political unrest. After Hurricane Maria struck the island, it's estimated that 80% of the country's agriculture was lost, over $8 billion in damage was done, and more than 3,000 people were killed. So that has a lot of people worried about the potential damage from another tropical storm. Chris Reese is joining us this morning to talk about Storm Dorian and how strong it could get as it heads toward the island. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, guys. You know, it's really possible that Dorian could end up being a hurricane or at least very close to hurricane strength. But one of the things we're not surprised about is the fact that Dorian exists and exists where it is. One of the things we're going to look at this morning is where tropical storms most likely develop as we head into August. One of those areas is the Gulf of Mexico. Think two years ago we had Harvey in the Gulf of Mexico. 14 years ago we had Katrina in the Gulf of Mexico. Both of those very known storms. Of course, you just mentioned Irma and Maria from two years ago. And then one of the other areas we watch is also we're talking about the northwestern Caribbean. Those often feed into those Gulf of Mexico storms. And then the third area, which is where we found Dorian. This is where we found Irma. This is where we found Maria. All of this is going to be the western side of Africa, all the way through the southeastern Atlantic or southwestern Atlantic, back towards the Bahamas and the southeastern coast. This is where Dorian is right now as we continue to track the system. 50 mile per hour winds right now, moving out of the west, and northwest at about 13 miles per hour. The pressure, 1,005. That's fancy weather term for, all right, it's a little over 1,000 millibars of pressure right now, but still, we would call that low pressure when it comes to a hurricane or a tropical system. Now, as this begins to move towards Puerto Rico, we'll look at winds at 70 miles per hour. This is a strong tropical storm, but you want to have 74 to 75 mile per hour winds for this to become a hurricane. But even still, Puerto Rico is on the eastern side of the system. We call that the dirty side of a hurricane. That's where you're stronger winds are, that's where your heaviest rain is going to be. So we're going to watch that closely, but let me tell you what else we're going to watch. As this begins to work its way towards the Bahamas, eventually it'll take a turn towards the Florida coastline and check out the date. This is Sunday at 6 a.m. This is the last weekend for a lot of folks to take a lot of summer vacations. Of course, it's Labor Day weekend, and Florida oftentimes is a quick little vacation destination for that one last hurrah, if you will. And so with the threat of a tropical system making landfall on the Atlantic side of the Florida coast, of course, we're going to be watching this very closely into the weekend. So you said we're actually a little bit farther along in the season than we thought. Yeah, so typically on average at this point, Point, we're still on the B or C name. So the fact that we're at the D name actually means that we're above average or above normal. But still, yes, things have been very quiet going through August. Don't get me wrong. Typically, though, it's September that we truthfully begin to see that peak of the tropics. And I think we're watching that happen now. Yeah. There's still a lot of season left. Yes, too. there is. We go all the way through November 30th. Certainly something you'll keep an eye on. Yes. Thank you very much, Chris. My pleasure.